Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. So today I'm going to be installing these. So these are wire looms and cable guides for the rear doors. Now in a previous video, I showed you how bad the cables are for the doors. Um, they have been kind of modified in some aspects. They do work fine, but I needed the guides anyway. This is an eBay purchase. The looms came with it, which is even better. And I got them for a really good price. Uh, so I'm gonna fit them today. And hopefully um, the cable will stop getting pinched in the door against the brake light. And yeah, let's crack on with it. I wanted to take this uh, moment just to show you kind of how bad this really is. So this should be where the guide is. Um, I'll show you what the guide looks like. Make sure it's the right one. Yeah, so um, that's what the guide looks like. And that's to protect the cable. And as you can see, the actual loom itself goes through the guide and into the other side. Now, for whatever reason, um, they have been removed on both sides. And obviously they've done a bit of a odd job on that. Try to weatherproof it with a little bit of a, some kind of makeshift conduit there. Um, but the problem is when you shut the door, that gets pinched right there. So obviously that's gonna cause some damage further along the line. Now I read on the MOT, a couple of MOTs ago, it failed because the uh, registration plate lights didn't illuminate. So I guess it's something to do with that. Um, the other side has another makeshift conduit, or this one is more like a conduit if you like. And um, I am having issues with the central lock-in, but I've tested it with multimeter, as you've seen in the previous video. And it seems to be absolutely fine. I was getting 12 volts through the cable when I was hitting the key fob. But I'm going to change the cable anyway, because I want to install those new guides. And um, should I need a backup cable? Obviously, I'll have the original ones as spares. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So I just want to show you the way that you, I'm going to remove these. It just looks like you've got Phillips screws in there. So I'm just going to remove that bit. And um, then that will allow me hopefully to gain access to this, which is just behind this panel here. I'll remove that and that will give me access to the other side of the, con of the cable, which should have the connect on it to remove. So I just want to show you how to um, remove the clips um, for the registration plate lights. Essentially, it is just a little tab here on the side. You just push that in with your screwdriver. Very difficult with two hands, one hand even. And that should just pull out. So see. see if I can balance that. And just push in and pull. There we go. Just need to do the second one and we're good to go. Okay, so when you're installing these guides, if you go ahead and just screw this on first, um, you're never gonna be able to get this end into the door um, just because of the angle of it. So what I'd recommend is that you feed this through first, the cable into the door. So, like so. It's very difficult doing this one-handed, so I do apologize. Tuck her in, like so, and then that gives you the angle that you need then to install that. Right, so I've installed the loom here and the guide. Like I said, make sure you put this side in first before putting it onto there so you get the angle nice. Um, connected that back up to there, that just pops out there. So if you just squeeze this and then push it out, that just made it a little easier to get the angle right on the connector. Um, and look how much nicer that is. I mean, when the door opens and shuts, look, that is absolute day and night, look. That's how it should be. I don't know where mine disappeared to, but they weren't there, so. There we go, look. And what I might do is I might just uh, spray some WD-40 around these connections just to make sure that they're uh, gonna have that little bit of extra protection because they are a little bit exposed here, so. All right, that one's done, on to the next one. All right, exactly the same principle for this one. I'm going to take the Phillips screws out of here I'm then going to remove the seven screws, I believe it is, yep, yeah, on this panel here. And so I can get easy access to the cable connector on the other side. And if you saw my, uh, if you saw my previous video, um, I'll show you how to, I'll show you how to remove the connector here. Um, this little piece of plastic here, if it comes off, that is a quick way to get access to it. And I'll just remind you, 
basically the way this connects disconnects is that these little clips here they push outwards and then it pulls down from the bottom so they can be disconnected and i'll show you in just a second when i disconnect it what the mechanism looks like okay just to show you again i did show this in a previous video but i'll um, do it again for the context of this video um, you'll see the connector there and the way that it works is that this part of the bottom it's up like this and you basically pull these to the side so you can push them down there's one finger two and then this should push down there we go like so and that releases it and then it slides out like this horizontally away from that connector and there's a little bar just here and what i did is i just pushed this just so i can pull it down out of the way so you just need to push that back a little bit with your finger drops down drops a good one all i need to do now is like i said remove this panel undo these screws here disconnect the connector in here and then um, i'll be ready to put the new harness back in or wiring link so this connector is a lot trickier to get out uh, than i first thought it would be and it's because if you look on the other side here you've got this little catch here so what i've done is i've put the connector this way round with the cables on this side and that seems to be the way to get it in and out so it's with the connector facing you and the cables pushed in over to that side seems to be just enough room to get it through that gap there as you can see a little flap here as well so you might just pull that back out of the way from the inside on the inside going back in the other way it shouldn't be an issue but it was a little bit tricky to get out that way but that is the way i managed to get it out with the cable pointing out to the left there and the connector facing towards me. Right, all I would say is when you go to remove this panel here on the right hand side, uh, because of the 12 volt socket here, um, just be very careful because you don't get much cable on the back of it. And um, just give yourself a little bit of room. So let's see if we get some camera. And you just push that in with your thumb on the side that's facing you and that just pops out and that'll free up. The panel for you so yeah just make sure not to pull that out too hard and probably what i'll do actually is i'll keep those panels out there's no point in putting them back in at the moment uh because the idea is to um i'll clean all these up and i'll probably put some four-way stretch carpet on those um so when i get around to doing the carpet i'm going to carpet them i've seen it on other channels it looks fantastic and um yeah it just creates a nicer finish i think on the uh, overall look of the of the van so um, what i'm going to do now is I get in there, uh, disconnect this harness from here, which is on the back here, just hold your finger down. And I keep saying, I don't always call it a harness or a loom, which one's right, I don't know. Uh, put it down in the comment if you do know which one's right. Um, sometimes I call it harness, sometimes I call it loom, but yeah, wiring loom, wiring harness, either or. Um, so that's now removed completely. Um, I'm just going to install um, the next one, which is, around so i'll find where i put that and uh, there it is fantastic yeah so i'm gonna now install this one it's in much much better quality uh, these were apparently off of um a van um that was pretty much just had uh like no miles on it it literally went straight in for a conversion they did something with the rear doors which meant they took everything off so these are pretty much brand new they've got no miles on them at all and i've got them for really good value and if anyone's interested in how much I paid for these, I was just looking for the guides because I knew that the actual wiring looms worked absolutely fine. Um, I was just looking for the guides and I found these on eBay and I put an offer in for £20 and I got both the plastic guides with both of the wires as well, the wiring loom. So um, that's both the left and the right rear doors, wiring loom and guides for 20 pounds and i think i paid three pounds for postage and they're like new so if you're looking for one of these um those prices are not impossible to it's not impossible to obtain these at those at that cheap value or cheap price if you like so um yeah just make don't get ripped off um just it pays us off to uh just do a bit of shopping so um i was looking for about a week for these and the right ones come up put the offer in got accepted it turned up literally in a couple of days i couldn't be happy with them I know that the other ones work, even though you can see they've actually, they're quite tatty. Um, they do work, so I will keep them as spares. Um, but yeah, it's just going to make such a difference, like how it looks. Uh, the only thing I need to get now, actually, once this is installed, um, is I need a new door stay, which is this part here. 
as I mentioned before, the actual uh, rubber pads or plastic pads, whatever they are, um, they're missing from here, which means the door opens more than it should, which in turn pops the little uh, button out, which is this, and that just pulls out. Um, because of the extra pressure this is putting on this button, it keeps popping out. And I don't want to lose these because these are actually quite expensive. Um, if you look these up online, you'd be quite shocked how much they are. I mean, I've seen them for like 15 to 20 pounds for that little piece of plastic. And, you know, it pushes into the door. There you go, you had it click. And the idea is, is that you push your finger in like that and it opens the door out to the 180 degree there. But the, that guide, even when it's like that, when it's fully extended, is fantastic. Look at that. I'm so chuffed with that. It's really going to protect those cables in there. So yeah, this needs to be resolved. Um, obviously, I can still extend the door. It opens up more than it should. It does stop eventually on here, but I will need to buy another. I think they're called door stays. It doesn't look like it's difficult to take apart and replace anyway. It looks like it's just what's that? Oh, more T25 screws that are probably going to rust and round off. I should imagine, and uh, just some bolts there they look like 10 mil what i've done actually i'll show you on this plate here i changed the t2 t25s here and here for these proper bolts because what i found is happening is that the dirt and all the concrete and everything from the van originally um ended up inside and it was literally like almost impossible to get out um luckily i managed to get them all out i snapped one of the plates in the process as you can see i don't have one here at all um so yeah this is where the plate should be don't have one there at all because I need to order another one of these. And these are like 15 to 20 quid. God, all these little parts are so expensive, hey? But anyway, the idea is by changing those bolts, um, I would totally encourage you to do that because, um, and they still have a flush clearance. I would totally encourage you to do that because getting in and out, getting things, they're going to get, this is going to get mucky and dirty. And, you know, and they, they're going to fill up with crap and they're going to rust and it's going to end up rounding off. Whereas with that, at least I can just pop a little socket on it or a spanner. And I'm not going to have any problems should I ever need to get them up. So I'll probably do the same for the door stays. I'll probably get some, you know, get some good uh, bolts on those. I'll get rid of these T25 screws because they're terrible. Right, let's crack on. So just another thing I've done. Um, on the new harness, I noticed that the... Uh, the little grommet here um, that is part of the cable tidy. Um, the teeth that actually has, have been snapped off of it. That must have happened in the removal process. So I've repurposed uh, one of the ones that weren't snapped off. I had one left on the um, original harnesses. That's one left of both harnesses. <laughs> and that one looks like it's about to go as well, actually. And they're not the strongest, unfortunately. Um, but it just needs to hold it in place. So um, I will eventually get around to cutting that off, but it's not doing any harm in there at the minute. And um, that's going to just hold it in place. So, yeah, uh, the way I did that, it's just a cable tie. Um, you know, you get in there, pull it back with something pointy. So I used the end of my multimeter and uh, just pushed it back through. Um, and yeah, so I managed to repurpose it from the other one. Keeps it nice and tidy. Hey everyone, so that is it installed, as you can see. Um, now, this is a loose connector here. This is obviously from factories. It's got the tape around it and it's not connected to anything. So I am guessing that that is actually um, for maybe like a reversing camera or something like that. Um, I have actually installed my own reversing camera, which is the one that everyone seems to have. And um, I'll probably upload another video just to show you the process for that. Um, they're currently crimped at, crimped at the moment, the um, connectors. So I am going to solder them just so I've got more of a uh, solid connection. And I haven't put mine into the reversing cable at all because I wanted to have my actual um, camera display be able to be on so I can drive along and if I want to, I can touch it and I can see anything that's behind me um, without obviously having to go into reverse. So um, I haven't done that, but I have seen, I think this might be the connector that people have been using. I think it's that cable there, the orange and white one. Could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I think that's the one I've seen on the videos that they tap into to be able to get that camera on the reversing, uh, to get that camera 
on the reversing cable. So, yeah, I'm going to leave this one disconnected. So this is for the, um, the 12 volt that is just here. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to end up removing that and putting my own one in. I should imagine something like, yeah, I'll put my own one in because as you can see, it's a bit rusted and stuff. Now, something else I want to show you. Now this has been installed, watch this. So, just gonna press the lock button. I heard a noise. It locks. And unlocks. So, from my previous video, when I was um, thinking that the issue was with the actual mechanism, mechanism itself, it wasn't. It was the cable. And even though I tested it, and it was clearly getting the 12 volts coming through on the pin, um, obviously there was a bad ground somewhere. So, somewhere on this cable is a bad ground. Now, I'm pretty sure, as you can see, I mean, this has been messed around with as uh, like that that is not the standard um that tape is not standard by any means so um that's probably what's happened and uh, it just means i don't have to go and buy myself um a new motor for the locking system and you know as part of me putting the new cable guides in just from an aesthetic just for like appearance reasons because it looks much nicer it's great because it means they're going to be protected better. They're not going to get pinched against the tail light. Um, these are nice now, how they should be here. And the added bonus is my door locks without having to use the key, which is also a bit depressing. As you can see, it's not <laughs> in a very good shape at all. It doesn't even shut properly. So I'm probably going to do another video as well. I should imagine where I'm going to replace all the casing for this and get that replaced I'll put that in another video also so I also just did um, a quick test um, with these just to make sure that they were lighting up um, as you can get pulled over it is illegal to drive at night without your number plate lit up and so please just make sure that if you do replace these that you just check afterwards that it is lighting up which I can see from this side it is I just noticed here as well, like it's like little jobs like this. Look, this is the passenger door, and look, these obviously need tightening up. They need to be tightened. So it's just the little things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up now. But you know, as you start doing the odd job here and there, you start noticing other little uh, things that are up. And um, my advice is, if you see anything like that, just get it sorted straight away. If it's a quick fix, don't leave it hanging around. Just get on with it because that's rubbing there. Look. That's a recipe for rust right there. It's going to need a spray of some ACF 50 or something like that, just to protect that, I reckon. I might even take that off and give it a bit of a spray of hammerite. I don't know yet. Either way, I'm going to tighten it up. Okay, so that's it from me today. I uh, just wanted to say, obviously, I'm really chuffed with um, the doors, how they've turned out. I'm really, really happy with the fact that the central locking on the back door is working now. I mean, it wasn't too much of an issue because I had that uh, manual lock capability, uh, but it's just one of those things, um, like I said before, for those of you who know me, those niggly little bits, I do like to get that sorted out. So that's obviously gone and saved me a bit of money as well, getting that um, replaced. Obviously I would have gone through it and checked it a bit more thoroughly before ordering it. Um, so yeah, what I'd say is like, I think I had a bad earth or a bad ground somewhere and that's obviously what's uh, been causing that issue with the door. Yeah, so um, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's been supporting the channel so far. Um, it's massively helped out um, like our subscribers. When we get to 100 subscribers, uh, we'll be able to have our own custom um, URL, if you like, for YouTube, which is like our first milestone. And then, as you all know, like, the, the goal will be to get to 1,000 and just be able to like get everyone on this journey together. And I hope that the videos are helping you out. Um, it's really great for us to be able to document this. And um, the idea for the channel going forward is that we will obviously be recording our um, travels uh, once the van is complete. So I'll create a playlist for all of the van builds 
videos I'll put together as like a series and then it'll be more of like a kind of travel vlog and I'll just be showing some of the amazing places that are nearby and um, where I live on this beautiful island. Um, so I apologise that the videos have been predominantly myself, obviously uh, Angela um, is pretty tied up at the moment. We've got a four month old and a two, two year old and they're both teething at the moment so she's been amazing. Um, I'm working from home as well at the moment so I'm literally just finding the odd bit of time here and there to kind of fit in these but I will try and upload um, as many videos as I can uh, given the circumstances obviously you know with Covid and everything I'm still working um, so I'm just trying to kind of like fit in with the time that I have so yeah anyway I just want to thank you again for all your support um, Angela will be in some of these videos very shortly and um, yeah stay safe everyone thank you for watching if you like the video please give us a like please hit the subscribe button if you're new to us hit the bell icon so you can be notified for new videos as and when we post them all the best